Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Barber's Arms. This is April the 30th, 2021. Coming up on tonight's show, episode 52 in conjunction with Wall UK and the British Barber's Association. Coming up, we've got mine and Gaz's news baits. That's going to come straight after this introduction. Ten past eight is the Barber Evo news desk, which is going to come and give us a little bit of news from around the globe in barbering and hairdressing. 8.15, we have our first guest joining us from America. We have the Gob on Legs, Mr. Ivan Zoot. He's going to be joining us from America around about 8.15. 8.45 is Gaza's cocktail. Um, so we're looking forward to the 52nd cocktail, Gary. I'm looking forward to that one tonight. You must be running out of ideas now. Around about 9 o'clock, we've got Kevin Bowley, the man himself, who's going to be joining us. Looking forward to having Kev on the show and Ivan on the show tonight here on Barber's Arms. And we've got some great introductory things that's going to be happening tonight on Barbers Arms. So stay tuned. Welcome, all of you. Here we go. Please welcome my co host, the one and only Mr. Gary Machin. Well, thank you, Mr. Simon Shaw. Lovely to see you and hear you once again, mate. Um, last week, we'd like to thank our guests, Callum and Danny. Fantastic job. Great, great guests. 130,000 views this week, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, from our uh, news desk tonight, if you like, or our news around the world, just a little bit of a, a play on. Uh, congrats to Paul Mack in, in Northern Ireland. He's had a baby. So well done, mate. All the very best. Oh, baby and, and missus are doing well. Um, fantastic news. Um, it's Crocodile Dundee's birthday today. All those years ago, he got launched. This is just one for you, Trevor. How all Australians like to be thought of. Um, we've got Star Wars Day and Press Freedom Day today that is celebrating. But also, we've got a American tinge to the show. So it is Louisiana's birthday, the state of Louisiana. Um, Louis the Fourteenth obviously got its name from that, and that's going to featuring our cocktail tonight as well. So, great show coming. What are you drinking tonight then, mate? Oh, I thought I've got a little, little guy up with a little beer to start with, first of the evening, and uh, I might try a little glass of Malbec tonight, guys, just to uh, break me wow. into the bank holiday weekend. Um, coming up, you know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the guests tonight, uh, just on our little bits as well. I just want to, anybody who's, who, who feels the same as well, I've been out on my travels this week, amazing to go see the electric space in London. Mark Woolies, but you know, Gary walking around London. If I told my mates in Barnsley, they're just like, no chance. But just walking around, I, I took a walk back to the hotel after the meeting, and it was amazing that you know, three or four barbers were knocking on the windows. I walked past and waved, and it's like, I'm a lad from Barnsley, and people in London, it was it were brilliant. I went in a few and seen a few people, and it was just nice to be out and about. Uh, but the feeling around everywhere was it, it has dropped. Uh, the, the, the little um, lull as it is now, um, it would have been nice to balance the weeks out for everybody. Um, but I do think it's hit everybody this last few days of this week. It's been a bit quiet. What's it been like over at Rogers? Yeah, it's definitely, you know, talked about it in the week. Talked to the team about it as well. You know, we're making some efforts to try and fill those spots. Because we were so busy the first two or three weeks, you know, the first two and a half weeks, um, We've we've had to be honest. We never have. We've had a lot of. We've had a few cancellations and no shows, which is really un, unusual for us. Um, and I think what it is is people were just edging the bets a little bit. We couldn't get in straight away, so we took an alternative appointment, and then they found somewhere a little bit quicker, which grasses you off a little bit. But you know, it, pe people desperate when when they, when we first opened. You know, as I said earlier, um, earlier in last week, you know, we've got 14, nearly 15,000 clients registered on on um, on the system. Now, physically, you're not going to get to all those clients in the first two weeks, are you? So if it's people like yourself, absolutely desperate, get back in the barbershop, you know, they're going to edge the bets a little bit. So hopefully that will all calm down and they'll uh, show a little bit of loyalty and but you share it around a little bit. Um, the no-show stuff's frustrating. And, and, and it ain't funny how you've just said it, but it's been a similar kind of theme across everybody. Yeah. I was listening, I was reading um, somebody from Leeds today pointing on saying, look, I'm going to try and be professional and polite about this, but he said a word about people who are no-showing. 
uh, from Boris and Co. Michael there said, look, it's really frustrating when you, we, we've tried as hardest, we've been locked down, have the common curses phone up and say, look, I've had my hair cut, I couldn't wait, but cancelled that appointment. Because yeah. you're obviously looking at your book and you're looking at your forecast thinking, right, we're going to be really busy this week. We've got 150 clients coming in and 15, 20 of them don't turn up. The turnover is a big thing. So, guys, especially consumers that's out there at waiting, just do the right thing. Make sure you cancel your appointments. Let's, let's not have any of these no-shows. Talking of that, though, guys, um, I was down at Wall this week and I thought I felt that in the industry a little bit. So as a little pick-me-up. We're going to do this for the first time I spoke to the powers that be at Wall. And um, just for the Barber's Arms, just for tonight, we are going to do a fantastic offer for you guys if you're listening and watching tonight, tomorrow, or on Sunday and Monday when you're watching Barber's Arms episode 52. It's popping up on your screens right now. This is the code, Barber's Arms. And if you go on the Wall website, you will receive a 20% discount if you put the word Barber's Arms in as a code you'll receive a 20% discount. This will expire at midnight on Tuesday. But just for our Barber's Arms shows, just if you're doing any bits of shopping this weekend and you wanted to uh, treat yourself to a new pair of clippers or trimmers or some hygiene sprays or gowns or anything that we've got on our website, um, just for Barber's Arms viewers, a 20% discount code uh, using the word Barber's Arms, that will give you a discount up to midnight on Tuesday. We'll keep popping that on the screen as well throughout this evening but take advantage of that hopefully um that's a little bit of a, a gift for bank holidays weekend what a nice man you are good girl that's fantastic cheers to that mate very newcastle brown there cheers and thank you for the wall family and our our sponsors and partners fantastic hey we've got some two great guests on tonight mr ivan zoot who's uh if you haven't heard of him you'll definitely hear him tonight and we've got Mr. Kevin Vorley, who's a, a gentleman and a, a scholar, great uh, an ambassador for the industry. Got a lovely, lovely shot down there in Essex. So, you know, when we actually go through to these, I, I think, I don't think it's going to be, uh, we're going to have any trouble getting any information out of these guys tonight. I think it'll be a matter of trying, trying to quiet them off, I think, eventually. But we've also got the Evo news desk as well coming up in about five minutes, three or five minutes. And then we've got these guys, so Mr. Ivan Zoot and then Kevin Bowley after our cocktail. So, Simon, you've had a good week. You've done a bit of work this week then, instead of just trotting around London. Yep, um, I did uh, three seminars on Thursday as well, three virtual seminars, obviously, from our academy. The message I've been saying as well, because a lot of them have been for colleges, so thanks to lots of uh, colleges over the last two weeks. Um, my seminars have hit nine colleges. 927 people have watched my virtual seminars over the last two weeks. So thanks for everybody tuning in. Hope that you all got your free wall masks as well. But um, after the, the, the careers talk, then we did an air cut and then we finished off with an industry talk to try to motivate people. Comments were fantastic, loved it. But students were asking our lecturers, what, what advice can you give to students, especially people going into jobs and stuff? My simple message has been, this is something I've, I've done myself all, all my career. Give the best version of yourself whenever you can. So when you're going for an interview, you get dressed for that interview. You do the best you can. You give the best version of yourself. And, you know, I was saying that, you know, I could have potentially done some of the seminars from home with the backdrop behind me, but I didn't. I made the journey of four or five hours to go from our academy, um, get in my Sunday best clothes and, you know, to, to perform really well and to have fantastic preparation and, and that, produced some great seminars and great reviews and that's my tip to everybody is give the best version of yourself wherever you can whether that's clients um a, an assignment um a cut in in your uh, qualifications or if you're doing any teaching whatever's in front of you give your best version of yourself so yeah a lot of work guys this week really enjoyed it felt a bit normal traveling working four or five hours driving back when i got back home last night which was about half ten Felt some normality. Um, back to work today, four or five Zoom meetings. Uh, um, you know, so we're back to normality today. But, yeah, really looking forward to uh, the ease of restrictions and being able to move about. So, yeah, it's been uh, really good. Well, it's, uh, cheers to all those who, who've managed to get in the beer garden tonight. It's absolutely lashed it down this afternoon in Stoke. So, I don't know how, how many of the beer gardens were. I mean, we, we, were, we were chuckling because, obviously, we're at work. So... 
Um, a lot of the construction industry, a lot of the lads who come in the shops, they're all in the pub at two o'clock on a Friday or three o'clock. And it was lashing it down. And a couple of lads came in absolutely soaked and they still braved it in the beer garden. So good out to all you guys who've, who've managed to get out there. Not long now before we're back in the pubs and hopefully attending football matches and everything else, 17th of May. Um, but, uh, you know, end of the month, that, can you believe how quick it's gone? It's, we're into May already, so the year's flying by again, as usual. It's, it into May, be- you know, and, and I think, you know, we've all done the beer garden, basically, again, everybody's been in and around and said, oh, it's brilliant cold. Let's stop mourning. We, we, we've got that. It is difficult when it's cold at night. Just get a big coat. And if you're going to go out to have a beer and that, don't mourn about it. You've mourned about it being in, in, in it long enough. So, um, yeah, get on with it. Before we start, before we hand over to Andrew and David at our news desk, don't forget to follow me and Gaz on our Instagram account, Simon Shaw Wall. Gaz is the British barber. And barbers underscore arms is our Instagram account on our website as well, thebarbersarms.co.uk. You can register now for our expo coming up. And uh, just to, to name a few of the presenters that will be joining me and Gary on our expo, but from Wall, you've got Michael Damiano, Sam Campagna, the Wall British Barber of the Year, Killian Madison, and Alan Beak. Um, Lying us up from the BBA as well, or joining you, Gary, as well, will be um, uh, Jack Ludlow. Jack's going to be joining you on your um, training as well, which is fantastic as well. So don't forget to get to go to the website. The Fellowship have put out a massive um, kind of lineup as well. So you've got Ukraine Young, Jonathan Andrews, Sam Bennett. Uh, Paul Dennison, Caroline Saunders, um, all going to be joining us from the fellowship, just to name a few of those top educators that's going to be joining us on the expo. Um, click over to the barbersarms.co.uk and you can start to register for the expo coming up uh, later in uh, maybe about five, six weeks, is it? It's not like that. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, uh, it's not. It's first weekend, first weekend in. June, isn't it? So it's yeah. well, it'll be the first and second week in June. So June the sixth, it comes on, and then we're going to run it for two weeks. So it's absolutely fantastic. It's going to be great. If anybody saw our twenty-four hour um, education platform that we were gave for free at the time, absolutely brilliant. Uh, we're going to have hopefully some of those people back as well. So you'll see some familiar faces, but also some great brands and top class education all day long. So looking forward to that. Um, just looking forward to next week as well. Uh, we've got Kenny Duncan and A-Star Bomb and Mohammed. So we've got a top class lineup at the moment, haven't we? It's, uh, it's, it's, it's yeah. looking really good. Stuff to Anybody look- who wants to know who does the footballers airs, I think A-Star as well, he does a lot. He's the one that goes to the England cap- camps and, does all the he's even got his own bedroom with a barber on the with the England badge and everything. So that's that's going to be really interesting along with Kenny Duncan next week. So uh, big lineup. Let's concentrate on this week though. Episode fifty two hundred and thirty one thousand of you tuned in last week to watch uh, Carl Newsom from Ruffians and the one and only me said Danny Robinson from Danny and Co. Really really good last week. I really enjoyed having them. Got a bit caught if you want me to be honest with guys. Had a little bit of a wobble on when we finished the show. Um, <laughs> A bit rough on on Saturday. Uh, it took me a while to to come round to my own senses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, only only long enough to go to the pub again on Saturday though. Yeah, well that that was <laughs> that's the way it goes at weekends, isn't it? I only do it to torment you because you're at work. I mean, it's nice to see the message saying first hour done at work while I'm just getting round to bacon sandwiches and planning on who's picking me up at what time to go out for a for a session again so hey yeah. I can't. If, if she was on the other foot mate i'd be right there with you right yeah definitely definitely be there with you so so we're heading for the barber evo news desk i think they're going to be with us any any minute they're just about to get their mics ready and and, and follow us on i think Yep, so guys, over to our news desk. Barbara Eagle, let's see what's happening with the news for Barbara and Anderson across the globe. Let's have a look. Thanks, Gaz and Simon. It's Friday, and welcome back to the Barbara Evil news desk. 
The pubs are open, but this is the only place to be on a Friday night. Don't forget that. I'd like to start by thanking my partner in crime, David Foster, for flying solo last week. Um, I may be sporting a nice tanning filter, but I can confirm I was nowhere near Turkey. David, how are we? Yeah, I'm good, thanks, Andrew. Um, thanks for hooking me up with the filter on here as well. Fantastic. Uh, not sure anybody's going to believe that you didn't go for that transplant, but nonetheless, uh, good to have you back. No, you can clearly see the... Um, <laughs> Airline is still pretty much shown, but um, David, Barbers have been busy this week. It's been a busy news week. Hit us with the news. Will do. Um, well, first of all, great to have our friends in Northern Ireland back at it. That was obviously last Friday, 23rd. And you know what? The feedback we've had uh, from so many folk uh, has been that they've been busy, which is great. Uh, long may that continue. Great to have them back. Um, let's kick things off in Iowa, in the Midwest, in America. Uh, Brian Hogan, not to be confused with Hulk Hogan, one of my childhood heroes. Paul Hogan. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Um, so uh, Brian um, is a barber in the Midwest, as I say, and he actually, um, through the pandemic last year, when things were a little bit more quiet, a lot of people weren't going out, um, like many barbers, found themselves with a, quite a bit of extra time. Brian actually turned that into a real positive. He actually recreated, uh, or I should say, created his own uh, video store, uh, much like Blockbuster, for example, um, in his uh, in his own house. Uh, fantastic images. They're up on the barberevo.com website. Go and check it out. A great example of a barber uh, using his, uh, his time really wisely. Brian did a great job with that. Um, so yeah, check that one out on our website. Um, bringing it back slightly closer to home, the London South Bank University, uh, they are doing fantastic things, a lot of tests and a lot of um, uh, different projects around the issues with high blood pressure. Uh, and what they've actually done, they teamed up with eight different barber shops uh, throughout London for a fantastic cause. Uh, the barber shops um, are actually going to test the blood pressure or take the blood pressure of their clients. Uh, and the particular area of concern is with uh, black and Asian men uh, who traditionally have quite high blood pressure. So these barber shops are working in tandem with this London South Bank University on this important uh, health project. So we salute them. The details are up on the Barber Evil website. Really great project. So well done to all involved. Um, two fantastic competitions to tell everybody about. Uh, first of all, the All Star Challenge, the annual American Crew competition. Uh, that is uh, live, it is um, active, and you've only got until May the 15th to get your entries in to participate. There are international winners who combine for the global competition. Uh, all details on barberevo.com. Great annual competition, that one. Um, also, to give everybody a heads up, another fantastic competition that is both UK and internationally focused. Brand new, it is the uh, Professional Barber World Series at Barber of the Year competition brought to you by uh, Dapper Dan, a host of other companies involved and engaged, which is great. Um, all details on the Barber Evil website. It's going to have a UK winner, it's going to have an international winner, and it's going to have a young Barber of the Year as well, which I think is an excellent thing to do. Um, and just so you know as well, judges on that one, people like Sid Sutton, Baldy, Simon May, Brandy Lachey, uh, Colin Petrie and Tyree Jackson. So fantastic international flavor to that one. So check that out again on our website. Um, final bit of news from me, uh, keep your eyes peeled. Uh, Andrew's going to point somewhere on the screen. We're hoping that uh, the latest uh, Barber Evil UK and Ireland, the May edition issue 26, is going to appear somewhere on the screen just now. A sneak preview, uh, full details will be live on Monday. Uh, of course, Monday uh, is a bank holiday for many, but full details will be available then. You're not going to want to miss this, the 26th edition of Barber Evil UK and Ireland. Check out barberevo.com for full details in the coming days. Uh, Andrew, great to have you back. Tell us all about this week's giveaway, please. Well, thanks, David. Some fantastic news there. And as if we didn't mention it enough, you can find all those news stories on barberevo.com. So our friends at Osmo have supplied the goods again this week. And 
the question it's an easy one well if you've been keeping up um osmo have just recently announced a new ambassador now all you have to do to win is the first five people to mention in the comments which i'm assuming is down here that um give us the name of the new ambassador and you can find that news again once more on barbarevo.com or if you head over to osmo underscore official on instagram and the prizes are the latest edition of barbarevo and also my arms disappeared <laughs> but a bundle of osmo products which include david foster's favorite which he's sporting at the moment is the matte clear which smells fantastic a big favorite of ours as well is the salt spray we also have clear wax and my favorite the power powder so a great little bundle of products and um, first five people to name their new ambassador in the comments wins brilliant thanks for that andrew and uh, thanks again for uh, tuning in uh, to the latest barbara evil news desk keep it with barbarevo.com follow us on instagram on facebook and uh, yeah, two fantastic guests uh, this evening. Really looking forward to watching the rest of the show. And we'll be back next week, Andrew. Yep. Have a be here, guys. Enjoy the rest of the show. See you next week. Thanks so much. Bye now. Oh, thank you to Andrew and David. Always uh, great to see their news desk as well. A little bit of news there from around the world. I love this little feature of the show as well, because these guys are dealing with everybody, especially stateside as well, guys. I think it's just nice to get a catch-up of what's happening in the industry. And, and you know, <clears throat> I speak to some of our guys over in America, and I've been watching some of the stuff that they've been coming out of there. And uh, it's just nice for all our viewers that watch tonight and throughout this next week as well, just generally what's happening. I must say at this point as well, God bless everybody in India. Um, it's going through a real tough time at the minute with the Indian variant of the COVID. Um, so all my prayers and uh, best wishes go to everybody out there. You know, let's try and get it right. Because until everybody's right globally, it has a knock-on effect to everybody. So um, we're in a real good position here in the UK. Th nearly 34 million vaccinated, 14 million about the second. Gives us a 65% chance of not passing it on. Um, so it's, it's getting to, to a real positive level here. Um, I, do you know what, though? I've been saying this week, guys, I just wish one one wish. Um, listening to what happens in Australia through Trevor as well. I don't, I don't know about you, you've probably done this for years, but I've never felt as close to Australia in terms of what's happening out there because obviously Trevor, we speak to him three or four times a week. You've probably done that a lot longer than me. Um, but I wish that we just close our borders down. Now, no one's going out. No one's coming in. 12 months. We've been used to lockdown anyway. Um, people travel like myself, but I said around that, you know, there's not going to be any travelling. Do I want to travel? Not, not particularly, unless it's safe to do so, for obvious reasons is personally going into countries and secondly, coming back into the UK. Any chance of passing anything back on? But I would just wish that we could close things down. Let's get the economy really strong here. Because I think if the... Um, the hoteliers and the hospitality trade are doing really well. They pass that on, more air coats, more clothes bought, cars bought, you know, building work carrying on. Um, our economy will be really nice and strong. It's that old saying, guys, as well. You hear it before you fly every time. Put your own gas mask on first before you can help others. And I think if we're in a strong position, we can always help others as well. So that's one of my wishes that I think we could do is close the borders down in and out of the UK. Well, you know, we're an island race. You'd think that would be easy for us, wouldn't you? It's, it's just that committing to that sometimes. I think we've been a bit lax, but it's just having the the uh, strength to do it, really. And, you know, even if it upsets some people. But great, uh, great piece from Barbaribo. It's a giveaway city today, isn't it? They're giving away as well. So we uh, anybody, anybody who wants to uh, join in the competition today, just get in there, get your coats in. And uh, we'll see what we can do for you. You've had a great, great start to the show already. So we've got Mr. Ivan Zuton all the way from Chicago. I think he's pulling up in the uh, in the car park as we oh, speak or in, in wherever he is. And uh, we've got Mr. Ivan Zut coming on, I think. Yes, looking forward to this one. 
Um, hopefully, um, he's going to live up to his reputation as well. So I'm really looking forward to speaking to Ivan and uh, finding out what's happening over in America. Without further ado, please welcome. I've watched this guy for a few years when I've been traveling, not only here in the UK, but also when I've been able to travel to America and different countries. I've passed Ivan's stands wherever he's been working and um, he's always had lots to say, always energetic on stage. Great guy. So without further ado, making his debut here on Barber's Arms in the UK. People watching us around the world, please welcome the one and only Mr. Ivan Zoot. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, Gary. Welcome. Thank you for having me. How's everybody doing today? Fantastic. <laughs> He, he says that every week, absolutely average. He, he's got the best job in the world, Ivan, so take the notes, sorry. Ivan, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on, on, on the Barber's Arms, sir. As uh, Simon's just given you a great introduction, we've met each other around the world in different places, um, mainly in, in North America. Um, you're an absolute stalwart of all the shows over there. I think you travel more than me and Simon put together, actually, the amount of shows you do. Uh, but Sh Simon... Uh, you know, with, with, with Ivan here in, in front of us, and I'm sure we're, we're not going to get any trouble in opening up to us, but um, Ivan, can you give, and this is this is a quick two-minute bio, I don't want to, you're taking over the whole show. So Ivan, for the guests out there who don't know you, uh, can you just give us a quick, quick bio of who you are, where you are, and where you're from? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, licensed barber, licensed cosmetologist. I uh, live outside the city of Chicago. Uh, been in the business for 33 years and have spent a little over 30 of it, uh, as you said, on stages and traveling and sharing in the industry and uh, helping people just uh, figure out how to blow this thing up. Fantastic. So you're based in Chicago. How is it in Chicago at the moment? Um, well, springtime, things are, you know, it's getting nicer every day. We, we, uh, we had some challenges pandemic-wise in the early going, but Chicago was, we got a mayor, and I don't live in the city itself, but we got a mayor who was, was pretty structured with how they managed and handled things. And um, we've, by and large, we've been doing really well now, back to business. And, you know, there's big bright light at the end of the tunnel, so uh, we're good. Uh, Ivan, <clears throat> if you've watched any of Barbara's Arms, we're going to go through some interviews, uh, speaking to you just a bit about yourself and your career, some questions there. We want to dig a bit deep tonight, let our audience find a little bit about Ivan Zoot and when they've watched you. Uh, but just trying to find a little bit more about you as an individual, but also as well, Gaza's then going to go into a quick fire uh, rant or rave and then we'll finish off with some profile questions at the end. Ivan, as you know, uh, at, at Waller Base, just outside Chicago, up in Sterling. So Chicago, since 2000, has been one of my um, favourite cities in the whole world, bar in London, because I've travelled there since 2000 at least two or three times a year. I know the city. I use the L quite a lot. I know where to go. Michigan's my playground. I, I kind of love it there. So, um, I, yeah, Gary, I know you've been there a few times. We've been there a few times together. I took Gary, we, got, we went to the Weber um, Grill in central Chicago once and we had a great night in there, didn't we, Gaz? Yeah, great. Uh, hospitality by yourself, excellent. I actually did my first baseball match in Chicago as well. It, you know, it's uh, I've travelled in and around Chicago, Deer Park and been out, out and about. It's a beautiful place. Just I know the city very well. But even around the area, the, the, the actual position in Chicago in the country, there's some beautiful places in and around, you know, the, the state there. So you're very lucky to live there, Ivan, and, and, and travel around. So, Ivan, we're getting, getting on to the nitty gritty. Then we, we, we start you off. Um, we know you've done loads of shows. We know you've, you're, a, you know, a, a veteran educator. Um, Show-wise at the moment, I suppose, you, you know, you're not doing as many. But from a, a, a if you could give some, some information or a piece of information, just one to one, you know, to a person out there who's just starting out or wants to improve their business. And, I, you know, I know you've got the, the uh, 100,000 cutters series. You know, you've got all those things that are going on and your comb and everything else will go on to. But... When you're when you're on stage and you want to just give that one piece, what what was the main most important attribute would you say to improving somebody's business? 
Well, I'm, I'm going to split that uh, answer into two pieces. I'm going to answer that question from a technical perspective, and I'm going to answer that question from a business perspective. Um, from a technical perspective, I cannot overemphasize how important it is for people to keep it simple. At the end of the day, the haircuts that we do a lot of that are our frequent customers that are the backbone of our business are not fancy. They're not complicated. They're not trendy. They're not tricky. They're your dad, your grandpa, your uncle Bob. They're keep it really, really simple, clean and basic. And you can win big in the business from a technical standpoint. Don't overthink it. That's my technical tip with regards to education and moving business forward. From a business standpoint, I, everyone knows I am, I am really heavily focused these last several years on the subject of pricing. You cannot do a single day's business. You cannot afford to do a single day's business at the wrong price. And the need to right price your business, to look at your menu and your offerings, and to be sure you are at the right and appropriate price to build your business is so vitally important. So those are the two, two real points of conversation that I would launch those discussions with. Yeah, I think, you know, like as you said, we've seen you and we know what you're about and I love your energy. You know, I've just said in the intro that I've been doing a lot of college stuff. And uh, one thing that you always do, even though you're drinking water, um, what time is it in Chicago? It is uh, 2.30 p.m. on a Friday. I've always had a drink at 2.30 p.m. in Chicago on a Friday. What's wrong with you? Um, <laughs> Ivan, so the, the, the first questions I'm going to come up with is, um, it's a little bit deep, and we want you to be honest, because we're all friends here on Barber's Arms. And we have lots and lots of thousands, nearly 6.3 million views since we started this show. So it's now the, the number one barber show and interviewing all the top guests around the world, especially through the lockdown one, two, and three. We've documented everything that's happened in this industry. First question to you, Ivan, is what is the best company you've ever worked for? And I want you to bear these things in mind. The best company that you've worked for that gives you a good education, motivation, chance to travel, and, and, and at the end of that as well, financially. Try to tie all them together. What is the best company that you've worked for with all those in mind? That's, you know what, um, as, as you referenced, I've had been fortunate to have some great experiences with some major brands in the industry and some, some secondary friends in the industry uh, in those ways. You know, I'm going to give you the cheating answer here, and I'm going to tell you the absolute best company to work for is your own. When you are, you are the CEO of your business and destiny, uh, from owning my shop, managing my business, uh, training my people, sending myself out for the good training that I needed. Um, I never had more fun and I never made more money than when I was focused on doing my thing. Um, that being said, I've had, I've had some employers that have been, um, they've all been good people. Uh, they've all been uh, generous financially. They've all made available to me, you know, a world of resources. You know, looking back, I don't think there was any step along my journey uh, that I would, I would classify as a mistake or a bad move. Um, I, you know, you know, we'll, we'll bring it home to the UK. Um, the folks at Denman that I've worked with on the, uh, the Zoot Home and that project have been, they're not an employer by any stretch, but they've been wonderful people to work with uh, in the time that I've spent working with those guys. Uh, and of course, I've had a long affiliation with Barbicide and with the pandemic and the focus on sanitation and infection control, um, that's a relationship that has been um, mutually beneficial. So, you know, we got to throw a little, uh, a little uh, their way as well. So definitely. That, that, that's, re that's really funny that you brought Demon in because uh, we've, we've got a, a young man who's messaged us to pass his best regards on, uh, Mr. Jonathan King, <laughs> who helped out uh, your, your zoot comb as well, didn't he? He was, he was a part of Denman for a number of the years that I had a relationship and working with those folks. It's been a while since I've spoken with him, but it's good to hear his name and a big shout out to, to Jonathan. He would be thrilled to know because at the time that I was doing business with Jonathan and his years with Denman, I really was not aware of or understanding Premier League football. And um, since that time, I have 
uh, because I worked with a guy who watched football or we call it soccer uh, 24 hours a day on cable, uh, became somewhat addicted and I am a huge, uh, I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna put it out there. I'm a big Spurs fan. So. <laughs> That is, well, that is a big statement. Well done, fair play to you. <laughs> the thing, the thing is that there'll be a lot of people shaking their head there from from the, from this side of the Atlantic. They'll be saying, "Who's forced him into saying that?" So uh, you know, it, well, all's fair in love and football. Do you know oh what, guys? If you've ever been in, you know, I've I've been, had like some periods where I've had a couple of weeks in Chicago for different things, and there were no point flying home, so I've, I've ended up finishing work on Thursday and then stayed the full weekend. And on a Saturday, if you're walking down Michigan doing a bit of shopping, doing a bit of food, Sat is a hub of sports. You've got so many teams in Chicago. You've got the Bears, you've got the Sox, you've got the Cubs, you've got the um, what else is there? There's Chicago Bears. Socks, we got the Bulls, we got the Blackhawks, we got Black Chicago Hawks. Fire Soccer. Um, yeah, you know, Chicago sports fans are, are pretty enthusiastic, absolutely. And Gary mentioned it earlier, and if anybody gets to Chicago, you've got to go for a visit to the Wrigley Field because it's just a, a unique stadium that you'll never go to anything like that when you get there. It's just a unique um, tourist attraction from my point of view. You've seen it loads of times on the TV. But when you get to it, it's quite eerie because you think, oh, it's just a weird, weird kind of building. It's just a, a quite a, a good set. And we love it in the, is it the McCormack Centre where they do the exhibition, the ABS? Yep. Again, you, I think you pass a big stadium up there as well as a big That's stadium. Right, yeah. right, right adjacent to McCormack Place is uh, Soldier Field where the Bears play. And yeah. you're not terribly far off from uh, where the White Sox play. But I grew up at Wrigley Field. Um, I had a grandfather whose business, his company had uh, season tickets to the Cubs. And uh, as kids, we were on the, on the, the ticket list. And the rule was um, after the first in or the second inning, if no adults had claimed the tickets, any of the kids that were on, and of course, this is the 1960s, any of the kids that were on the list, um, they just gave you a pass in. So what we used to do, and I know this is the important conversations here at the Barber Arms, what we used to do is we used to... <laughs> shopping center we used to take off our shoes roll up our pants and go in the fountain to get enough change so that you had enough change for a hot dog and a soda when you went to the ball game and we and Wrigley Field if, if you're not familiar it's it's an old stadium that is literally dropped into the middle of a neighborhood it just yeah. no one would build it there now but what we used to do we used to ride our bikes to Wrigley we would leave our bikes at the fire station across the street and the firemen would watch our bikes. We didn't even lock up our bikes and we would hang around in the street waiting for home runs to come over the fence. And of course, those were years when the Cubs were not putting a lot of home runs over the fence. But <laughs> after, after the second inning, we were able to go in and these were at the time, you know, some of the best seats in the stadium. So I, I back in the, and the, by the way, you don't know, but on August 8th of, 1988, 8888 was the day that they installed the lights in Wrigley Field. So prior to 8888, they were all day games. Wow. In the summertime as a kid, you rode your bike down there. There was baseball every day. I mean, it was, you know. Do you, do you, do you know what? I mean, the, the baseball thing in America, and I don't know if a lot of people, a lot of our viewers will get this, but there's a huge amount. I mean, Mr. Brian Guam, who, who, we all all over America and, and North America and, and Canada. Um, there's how many how many games is there in, in a season? It, it's something like there's two hundred and something games, isn't there? One hundred sixty-two. Uh, you know, and oh, it's games it, that oh, unbelievable. And the daytime games, night games, they have series. And I, I've watched. Um, I've been done a lot of work in Atlanta, you know, as well for, for the Braves as well. So we work very close to there. So I've taken in quite a few. Uh, uh, baseball games in, in the end, and it's just a fantastic feeling of, of community. Yeah, I thought it, I thought that really struck me as well. I'm a, I'm a Chicago awesome. fan, though, guys, oh, because I've been there. So I, I support all Chicago teams. I can't help it. I'm a, I'm a Chicago boy. I, I can't help it. Even though 
travel to other parts of the US. Um, I'm, I'm a big Chicago fan. Well, wherever it is, if it's the Blackhawks, if it's the Cubs, if it's the Chiefs, wherever it is. Ivan, um, coming on, any questions you've got, guys, while you're listening as well, pop it in onto the chat group there. Any questions that you want to ask Ivan whilst we've got him and his knowledge, let's pop him in. But I'm going to ask a question that probably um, people might want to ask is, but Ivan, what company would you love to work for if you've got a chance? And it could be in this industry or it could be a different life if you weren't a, an hairdresser barber. Uh, what company would you like to, to work for? Just for one day. Just to say, right, don't matter. Oh, I've, I'd just love to work for that company for one day. Which company would it be? Um, you know, I, I'm going to answer again, both beauty and barber industry and outside the beauty and barber industry. If it's outside the beauty and barber industry, um, it would be in uh, the outdoor arena. I would love to be, you know, a guide for hiking and fishing uh, in the southwestern part of the United States, out in the bright sunshine and, the, you know, the hot sun, the fresh air, uh, you know, a fishing guide or a hiking guide or something like that, uh, because I really enjoy the time outdoors. And, and as I'm, you know, certainly the pandemic has been a gift in that regard and no, no trade shows. We got to We got to fish. But um, in the beauty industry, who would I like to work for? Um, wow. That's a really interesting question, because at one point or another, in the men's side of the business, I've worked for almost everyone, whether as a contractor for an individual project or a single event or something. Um, what I might want to do is I might want to work for one of the organizations that run the trade shows. Um, the people that put on the premier shows here in the United States, um, the family that or has that organization, Premier Orlando, uh, Columbus, Ohio, Birmingham, Alabama really a, a great organization. They run what I consider to be the number one show uh, here in the United States. And I would love to, to get a glimpse behind the scenes that I don't normally have, especially when it comes to, in this day and age, what I see as a real challenge, who's making the decisions about who's putting who on stages? Uh, because, you know, education in our industry has really been challenged to say the least in the last several years. And um, as I think you guys know well, the number of followers you have on Instagram has no bearing whatsoever on your ability to share valuable content and information. And fortunately, I think the shows have figured that out, but we've been through a few rough years of, well, they have followers, let's give them a microphone. And I think that's been to the detriment of our industry in a large way. You know, do you know what? I think, I think that's a really great um, lead into to shows because unlike, unlike UK shows, the American shows or North American shows, you do a lot of breakout rooms, don't you, after as well. So you do the main stages, you'll do the, the, the brands, you know, the brands will have their own educators, which is really big in, in the States. But um, I, I found when we were doing education for the BBA, because we were a new brand and, and breaking into that arena, um, people were really slow to coming forward. But then, as soon as they, they realized which was great, the quality of the product and quality of the educators, we, we, you know, we, we were taken really, really well. And I think that's a great point that you brought up about just because you've got a huge following. But you've got to, you've got to look at it from the other side. Um, you know, presenters need to be, have almost a, a standing, I think, you know, from a, a professional point of view. But from a show, from a, a show organizer, they need bums on seats, don't they, as well? So it's a very hard thing to actually, uh, you know, to manage. I think, but I think well, Simon, Simon would actually know more about that as well because. Well, I think you know you just said it there. You know, in America they do quite a lot. So if I've done a show there behind the chair, or we've done something for Wall, you know, the the the, the hour after that show is it is press. You go into a room, you ask questions. You know the sports across the models, but it pales into insignificance when you travel to like Malaysia and Thailand and India. I've I've gone to a place where I said, right, guys, I've got to go now. I've got to get back onto the stand. You know, I've like two hours since I did the show, and I'm still here asking questions, taking photographs. It's been fantastic, but you know, you do need to to get back to business as normal. Uh, Ivan, coming up now, uh, Gary's section is going to be what's called rant or rave. Uh, there's going to be a subject that pops up and uh, you're going to rant or rave about it. So over to you, Mr. Machin. So, Ivan, I don't know if you've seen it before. You're going to be given a subject. 
Um, can we just spin that wheel, please, production? We don't know what this, this subject's going to be. And you can rant or rave, and I'm sure you're going to have no problem whatsoever, whatever we give you. Because you sounds an, like a fun game. You, you've got an opinion on everything, mate, so it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, we're just waiting for that wheel to stop. We're in the dark as much as you. And it's going to be... Cool. Festive holidays. So you can rant or rave about festive holidays. Over to you, Mr. Ivan Zoot. You've got two I think everybody wants to rave about festive holidays at this point in time because of the impact lockdown had on family gatherings and togetherness and all that good stuff. I think for the next 12 months, everybody's looking to really enjoy festive holidays. <laughs> Fantastic, mate. Oh, it's short, short and sweet and, and good. Um, I like that. I, 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 that's it. I, I expected that to go on for about five minutes, actually, your rant on Rave Ivan. You, you've let me down a little bit there. Um, but, um, you know, one of the things I like as well is, you know, whenever we've seen you at exhibitions, if I'm walking past, you give me a shout out and vice versa. You know, even sometimes you work for opposition uh, brands. Um, uh, like anybody, Kev Vaughn is coming on next. He's obviously a big um, ambassador for Andis, but it, it, outside, you know, the guys will tell you Andis at uh, Boldy and everybody and Aileen, when she worked there, I'm mates with everybody. When I turn in there, I want to beat everybody. And we've had a great run of doing that at Walks. So obviously, in the UK, we've got a real stronghold of that market. But globally, as you move around, it's a little bit more even. And uh, the one thing that people don't understand is, I love to tell everybody, is that off them stages, and even on stage, there's a respect. But out, out of the stages, we're all really good friends, very respectful to each other. And uh, kind of like, you know, if, if, if you are in the mire, I'll, I'll help you out. And I think, you know, it's, it's really important to let everybody know that there is never, ever no longer ends with anybody. You know, I think the brands work very closely yeah. as mates out, out of that. Ivan, before it's been, I go it's, been a, it's been a decade since I was a corporate employee at Andis, and I still maintain, you know, friendly relationships with everybody over there. But through all those years, whether it was, was the folks at Wall, folks like yourself, um, we're all in a similar game, but you know what? These these are uh, our associates. These are the people we do business with at the end of the day. So yeah, it's always been that way for me. So all good. We're going to finish off with some quick fire questions, um, Ivan, just to get a little profile on yourself. But just before I ask you that, one quick question. Who is your hero? Who is my hero? Um, well, once again, you know, you've got the, the in the business and, and outside the business. Um, one of my first employers, a gentleman by the name of Bob, um, he owned a very fancy upscale full service salon. And as a cosmetology school student, I was a shampoo girl, uh, folding towels, sweeping floors, rinsing hair color for other people. And he and I used to fight about the business every single day. He believed that the only thing that mattered was the technical excellence of the haircut. And I believed at the time that the only thing that mattered was the customer service experience. And I believe you could be a crappy hair cutter and you could build massive business if you understood customer service. As a result, not he and I fought like cats and dogs, but with a level of respect. And I think he helped me understand that I had to be a better hair cutter um, because anytime a group of barbers gather in a room, the worst hair cutter in the room. There's no question about that. I have, my entire career has been based on surrounding myself with people better than me. Um, and he was a good example of that in that regard. So, you know, my, my entire career launched through somebody like that. Outside of, uh, outside of the business, um, you know, heroes are tough to come by. I'm, I'm gonna go with the classic, uh, my dad answer. Um, my dad was involved in an entirely different industry and business. Uh, he's been gone for a, a long time. My youngest son is named after him, but um, he took his, the craft side of his business very, very seriously, but he also understood the importance of the education side of his business and was a, a great example for us in that regard, so. Good, good answers, loved it. Love the passion, love the motivation as you're saying it as well. Quick fire questions, here we go. Ivan Zoo from Chicago. Thanks for being on Barber's Arms. We're going to finish off some quick fire questions and then um, 
a little fact about what some one fact that people don't know about Ivan Zook. But first of all, what's your favorite food? My favorite food? Um, well, being a Chicagoan, we got to go pizza. But within that, thick crust, thin crust, Eastern style, cracker crust, deep dish, stuffed. The categories are broad, but it's got to be pizza. Pizza <laughs> Uno, just off uh, Michigan, just uh, around where Gary, I think we took that. And first time I ever went there, you, you, there was only normal piece. I get the individual piece, it's about that big, but it's enough. It's like a pie. It's just like the pieces in Chicago, fantastic. Great choice. Uh, beer or wine? Beer or wine? Uh, beer, when, it, when I do, I don't drink a lot, but beer, definitely. Favorite music? Um, uh, country. I'm a country boy. Great. Favorite destination? What's the favorite, like to travel either on? Vacation or working? Um, I like to get out and hike, and I've gone to Vegas for business five, six times a year for, for decades, and um, I have been working my way through the trails in Red Rock Canyon. Uh, I may not live long enough to hike them all, but in the desert, I don't like Vegas, bright lights, gambling Vegas. I like the desert in Vegas when you get outside of town. Um, I've got to differ with you there. I fucking love Vegas inside. <laughs> They're just too much for me to not get out into the desert. I'll leave you to that. I'll meet you in the MGM or in Wynn Hotel or the Bellagio. Um, yeah, that's where I'll be. And um, who would be your ideal dinner date? Who would you like to have a dinner with? No, you don't have to be, you know, from a female point. Just who would you like to have that two hours with dinner, beers, wine, chat? Who, who would you love to have that dinner date with? I'm, I'm going to go with, uh, I'm absolutely my dad. You know, he's been gone about 23 years and uh, 23 years is a long, long time. And there's so much I would want to share with him about my boys uh, and about our life and, and everything since he's been gone. So that's it. That's an easy one. Fantastic. Hey, well done, Ivan. Before I pass you on to Gaz, let's just do a little recap here. We've got Ivan Suit here from Chicago. Fantastic international uh, present to work for some top companies and is such a great guy and the energy that's come over tonight. Guys from around the world who's watching Barber's Arms either tonight or in the week, I'm sure you can feel the same kind of passion. Ivan's having his favourite food in Chicago, which would be from any of the pizzerias around Chicago. They're all fantastic, but his favourite food is pizzas. He'd be having that with a nice beer, even though he doesn't drink a lot, he likes to have a beer. He will listen to some fantastic country music and uh, there's an abundance of country music there in America to choose from. He'd be doing all this in Vegas, but not in the highlights of Vegas, not on that fantastic strip, in the Golden Nugget or the Win Hotel or the Bellagio. He'd be out in the deserts doing all this above. And if he could have one dinner date, it would be with his late dad to pass on all his stories about his family. Ivan Zoot, you've been a fantastic guest. Thank you very much, brother. Well done. Thank you. Ivan, just to finish off, I'd just like to say what a pleasure it is to meet you again as usual, and it's uh, great to see you. Hopefully we'll be back over in North America and we'll bump into each other and uh, we'll have a beer or a piece of pizza out there. Uh, just before we leave, can you let our guests, our, our viewers around the world, something that nobody else knows about Ivan Zoot, something that they wouldn't generally know about Ivan Zoot. Let us into your, into your, the real Ivan Zoot. Okay. Um, probably nobody in the professional beauty and barber industry knows that I can ride a unicycle. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, mate. So in another life, you'd be a circus performer as well. Uh, you know what? If you've ever been to a hair show, I'm already a circus performer. It's just a question of trading one tool for another. Ivan, bro. It's been a pleasure, sir. Thank you very much. And we'll see you on the flip side, hopefully, sometime soon, back over the water. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so sir. much for having me. Take care, guys. Be good. Well done, Ivan. Great. See you soon, bro. Bro, that's like brother and a bud at the same time. That's my new saying, bro. Um, bro, great. Well, listen, that is now we've been interviewing him for like 35, 40 minutes, and he just flies because uh, energy, passion, whatever he says, whatever he does, he gives the best of himself. Anybody who's watching that tonight as well, feel that passion about whatever he says, whether it's waiting for an home run at the regular field, being a kid with his bike, or working on some of the international stages he's getting in his own business, which says 
is giving the most uh, joy and uh, the most profitable thing that he's ever done is working when you work in, in your own company. I love that, Gary. I enjoyed that. He, he does some of the best. You know, when we were talking about the breakout rooms after, after the show, during American shows, they have to do CP, our equivalent of CPD. So they have to do so much, so many hours of professional <clears> development. <throat> so when you, when you go, they go, they have to go there, they have to attend so many seminars and then they have their form signs for, you know, because they're licensed out there. And Ivan is one of those people who he packs it out every time. He, he's been in to see us a few times on the BBA for, for when we've been doing ours as well. So he's an absolute legend within the industry over there and he's a great guy, but um, he, he always runs over. I'm dead shocked that we've got him off so easily, to be honest. Hey, listen, he's it, it, it like a fountain of information. I loved it. Uh, coming on to legends, um, talking a legend. I'm talking a cocktail legend. Uh, we are just about to see our 52nd cocktail um, in conjunction with the British Barbers Association and Wall UK, thanks to our main sponsors here on Barbers Arms. Don't forget as well, when Gaz has done his cocktail as well, we're going to give you some, uh, again, have a look at the Barbers Arms code. Gets you 20% off at Wall till midnight on Tuesday. Great offer for the bank holiday as well. But uh, without further ado, Let's have a look at what Gary's got cooked up for us before we fetch our next guest on, Mr. Kevin Varley. Let's have a look at our 50-second cocktail. Thank you very much, Mr. Sam Shaw. So, we're doing a Sazerac cocktail. Have you ever had one of these, Simon? Sazerac. So, it's very, very similar to an old-fashioned. But it's, it's I mean, because we're, we're in, um, uh, it's, we bought it up today in Louisiana. It's their birthday when they were actually founded. Actually, the French were in there first. So this is a bit of a homage to there. So it's a Creole kind of cocktail. So first of all, we put some ice in our glass. And this is going to be a funny one tonight because we've got um, two parts to it. We've got absinthe, which we're putting in there. And we're putting about one part absinthe, about 10 mil, something like that. And then about seven parts water. So all we're doing is we're literally just changing and just putting absinthe in our cup, really. We just want to coat the inside of the cup. So our shaker, got some more ice, put that in there. And we're using cognac. So we got some Remy Martin here. Absolutely lovely. So we're using 20 mil cognac. We've got our shot glass here. So that goes in. We've got some 100% rye whiskey. So that's going in as well. About 20 mil again. Then we've got our sugar cane syrup. So when we use sugar cane, this is moaning. You can use any, if you wanted to use a, uh, a cube of sugar, you could smash that up in the bottom of it too. It's just easier when we do this. So about 10 mil and there. We'll give it a little another drop because after all, this is a Sassanac. So there we go. So we've got some Creole. I'll just give that a shake up. And what we're going to do, Creole, any Creole bitters. So we're just going to give it one, two, three, three splashes of that. And then we've got our Angostura bitters. We're just going to give it one glug of that. Just put that in there. It seems a lot of different, but this is the, this is it. You know, you do need these ingredients in there. You can change the other, the main ingredients up a little bit if you want to. But we're going to put this on, shake it up. So what we're going to do here is now is just strain. I have I put the strainer. So we're just going to strain this absinthe, absinthe out of my glass now. And we can put that to one side. You can use that. It's in a cool glass. You can actually put that and use it as a, a shot in a minute if you want to. It's like two parts to this, if you like. So we're going to take 
Some more ice, put that in there. And we're gonna put that in. And there we have it. We have our Sassanac straight in in an old fashioned glass. Good out to everybody, hope you enjoy. So this is a bit of homage to Louisiana and the Creole community. All the very best. I've got to say that red Malbec's warming me up. I love an old-fashioned, though. I know you're not doing an old-fashioned, but, oh, well, whatever it were, very quickly went down. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. But there is, and I'm not going to do all of this because this is only, we eat absinthe and water, but this is what we coated our glass with, so I'm just going to have a little sip of this. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know if anybody's drank uh, absinthe, but... It can be the ruin of, of everything and everybody if you're not careful. So we, we, won't, we won't dwell on that one too much. But there we have our 52nd uh, cocktail. Well done, mate. 52 oh, cocktails. You've done absolutely amazing. And uh, I think at some point you're going to have to uh, log all these cocktail books and uh, get, it, get it out there. Hopefully for Salon International, we'll have uh, some printouts. Um, which is your cocktails there because I think they've been fantastic you've done really well with them and and you know when you go to some bars and stuff like we said it passed and that they've got like maybe eight cocktails on there to come up with what you've done in, in every week and they all look delicious as well by the way and I'm sure you all enjoy them um and, and I know some people have said that they've, they've actually the week after all that weekend they've gone out and bought some of the mixtures that you've done because they've looked so good the way you've done them with the right glasses and the right temperatures and everything you've done superb. Guys, before we get Kev Volley on, don't forget to follow us on our Instagram, Simon Shaw Wall. Gary is the British Barber. Barbers underscore arms is the Barbers Arms Instagram account. For our website to register for our expo, which is on the 6th of June, you can register now. Go across to our website, which is thebarbersarms.co.uk. Just to tell you some of the educators that will be already confirmed and there's more to follow, but some of the, the educators that's on there, past British hairdresser of the year, Rob Eaton, is going to be performing actually on our expo. I'm really looking forward to that. Along with me and Gary, we've got Sam Campagna, Michael Damiano, Alan B, Killian Madison, Jack Ludlow. We've got Hooker and Young artistic team. We've got Jonathan Andrews, Sam Bennett, Paul Dennison and Caroline Saunders, just to name a few with Rob Eaton that's going to be uh, joining us on our expo and Bobby Thompson as well. They're all going to be joining us. What a lineup already. 15 names there um, that's going to be on the expo. What a, a week, two weeks that's going to be every Sunday as well. You, on the two weeks, you're going to see these fantastic presenters and recordings throughout the week on that as well. And some fantastic stands uh, are going to be there as well, doing some really cool oh, stuff. Yeah. So I'm oh, really looking forward oh, to that. Yeah. To the website. Oh, and also as well, before we oh, get into the yeah. car park, we've got a special offer on this week, 20% off all wall products on our web shop. Use the code, which is Barber's Arms, just for you, Barber's Arms followers and listeners. That is open till midnight on Tuesday. So whenever you listen to this, if you get an opportunity over the weekend, click into the wall website, put in the Barber's Arms code, and you will receive... 20% discount, guys. Here we go. We've got our next guest knocking on the door. One and only, Mr. Kevin Vorley. Welcome to Barber's Arms. I think we're nearly there. I've got a blank screen on mine. Hi, gents. Hey. Can you hear me? We Kevin. can see the big K. We can see the big Kev is there. I can't hear you. Live. Can you, Kev, is there any chance you can, can you turn me? your hand? Can you, yeah, we can hear you. Can you turn your camera sideways on? That way? Yep. Perfect. Perfect. There we go. We can see you in all your glory there. I know Kevin's still at work after a busy day down there in Essex. Kevin is a fantastic ambassador for the Andis brand. I know probably a lot of people are saying, why are you introducing that, Simon Shaw, as Global Artistic Director of Wall? But this is Barbara's Arms. Uh, we're a neutral here on the show. Kev's a fantastic ambassador. Uh, it doesn't want brand. it. How are you guys? We're, we're very well. How are you, Kevin? I'm very well, thank you. Can you hear me clearly? 
Yeah, we've got you loud and clear. Can you hear me? You keep, I'm losing. We can hear you. Yeah, I've got my, give me two seconds, it's going to get me sound up a bit louder for you, all right? Are you on data or Wi-Fi? I'm on, uh, I'm on Wi-Fi, but I'm just trying to, just, I can't get me, I only get the volume louder, but I can barely hear you. I'm trying to make sure I get more, better volume on you. Okay, well, we can hear you perfect. Two seconds. Sorry, guys. It's okay. I can just about, you have to say you both. We're very well, Kevin. How are you? I'm all right. Busy day. Busy day. Thank you for asking me on. It's great to see, have you on the show at last. I know you were coming from the shop. If we can, we'll have a little walk around the shop in a minute. We'll have a, we'll have a look around because I know you've got an absolutely award-winning, lovely, lovely shop down there in Essex. Um, just quickly for our viewers, uh, just tell us where you are and what you are, Kevin. Just a just quick, quick roundup of who you are. Well, my name is Kevin Borley. I'm a, I'm a professional barber. They're based in Essex, uh, originate from London. I've been in, um, I'm a professional barber. I train, I teach. Uh, I have a company called Kay Barbers. Um, K Barbers has been established 15 years now, and we're based over in Essex. And we're currently now in Billericay. We had Leon C now, we're all in Billericay. Um, and I work with Andy's Clippers. Um, I'm one of the global educators for their team. I work with the MH Fed as an ambassador for these guys. And um, I'm a general, I just love Barb and I love the industry. I've, I've been in and around it for a long while now. Fantastic. <laughs> Gary, just to share a story with everybody for Barbara's Arms as well, before we start in the questions with Kev. I got a phone call um, in lockdown um, of Kevin. And um, Kevin started the conversation by saying, hi, Simon, how are you doing? I said, I'm very well, thanks, Kevin. How are you? And he started to ask me questions about the insurance for his shop. Now, I knew it was Kevin. And if I wouldn't have been the stand-up guy I was... I could have really led him down the card and path as a little bit of a joke. because so he was asking some serious questions about insurance and safeguarding and the restrictions on um, his staff trading. But I said halfway through, I said, Kevin, let me stop you. It's Simon Shaw from Wall. He went, oh, my gosh. Sorry, mate. And then we had a little bit of a joke about that, didn't we, Kev? Yeah, we did. I've, I've, I've got two Simon Shaws in my book. And uh, obviously, clicks on the wrong one. And obviously, you're the most important one to me. And um, the other one was just my insurance guy. So uh, I rattled on about my insurance. I was talking about, um, obviously, colour, um, the, the, the brand-new colour work we have to do with COVID. And I was just double-checking the consultation sheets. And Simon was very good on uh, winging me on a little bit, bless you. But once I recognised the voice, I went, you're not Simon Shaw, you're Simon Shaw, aren't you? And he went, yeah. So we had a good old chat and good catch up. It was lovely to speak to Simon, obviously. Lovely to speak to you as well, mate. Now you've seen Barbara's arms. We're going to give you some questions about yourself, and we're also going to give you some. Uh, you know, we're going to talk to you a little bit about um, you as an individual, your brand, and uh, well, then we'll finish off with some personality questions as well. My first question to you, Kev, is. Uh, what excites you most okay. about this industry? What excites you most about your job? I think it's, um, I think the most exciting thing about the whole industry is that it's ever-changing. It's always evolving. It's always developing. And you can't predict it. And I think because you can't predict it, it makes the industry exciting. Um, I myself, and myself, yourself, Gary, and obviously Simon, we've seen so many changes especially in the last 10 years, we've seen so much evolve and so many good things happen to the industry. And I think um, it keeps you on your toes as well. It's a job that you never, ever know everything. You've always got to learn. And I don't think there's many jobs that allow you to do that, to keep evolving and keep learning. And uh, we're old boys in the industry now, I saw it. So we quite enjoy it. And I quite enjoy um, having young people around the industry to push us a bit further for once. And I actually quite, it inspires me. I find that I'm getting more inspired now as we get older because we want to keep on our toes and keep doing what we do. Do, do you know what? I think you've hit it on the head there, Gavin, as well. But with having staff around you or, or teams with uh, Simon's case, 
Uh, and you, I know you've got quite a few. How many barbers have you got with you now at the moment? Well, my team is seven at the moment. Uh, we did have 12. We moved to, we had two venues. We opened the second one three years ago and it was a very, very big shop. And it, we, we run it for three years in two venues. And I found it personally quite difficult to manage the location side as well with the stage work and the industry shows. I found it quite difficult and demanding. And I, I made <laughs> I realised having two shops wasn't the easiest. Um, yeah. And I decided to amalgamate them into a super shop. So what we did was really strange. We took the original shop, basically put it in a box and bought it to the other shop and refitted it. So we nearly got like a, it's almost like a double shop. It's a very quirky place. And I found managing one seemed better. Um, and I was in the shop all the time and I felt more relaxed. And um, then we scaled the team down and then obviously we got COVID come up. And obviously last year's history, as we know. Um, but looking now, I've got a team of seven and I'm looking to add to it. I want to grow again. I've got 12 chairs. So I've got plenty of time. Um, but I feel more comfortable in one big venue and it will allow me to do academy teaching, stage work, um, outsource consultancy, anything I want to do now. Because I just think in one venue at the current time is more adaptable and more easier to manage. You, well, that's, that, that's what I was going to come to, because I think keeping a young team around you as well, it keeps you young, keeps you on your toes, it keeps you current as well. I think you can become very isolated if, you know, if you, if you don't have staff with, with you and working beside you as well. But from, from your point of view, you've, you've answered my question, really. Um, you know, I, we've, said, we've had this question asked quite a few times. And, you know, if you're leaving the shop on a regular basis... Um, does your shop still make money while you're not there? And that, I think that's a key thing to, to actually working on stage or educating outside the shop or whatever. I'm very lucky that I've got really good managers, uh, great academy staff, so it, it still ticks along when I'm not there. But, it, you know, that's really important from your point of view. And you, you've, you've learned from that, obviously, by, you know, bringing it all together onto one side. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I think as well... Uh, I think uh, it was a hard... It, was a, it took me a long while to get to two venues. It took me a lot of bravery to get to two. And when I found the venue I wanted, it was, it was a really big venue. And when we chose it, my wife, my wife came with us and she even said, this is too big. It's not the right one. I said, this is definitely the right shot. I can see what we were going to do. So... Um, and doing so was so exciting because I waited so long to expand. Um, and I think my first shot, in all honesty, over it, the, the, it's in a business. I think you've got to aim to over um, to over deliver the expectancy, and that's what makes a successful shot. And I think Lee was a very quirky barber shop fifteen years ago. It was incredibly quirky. And it over-delivered. It wasn't what people expected, and it really established what we done. So the second shop, really, um, it was quite a different. Um, it was a different perspective. It was a different challenge, and I was ready for the challenge. And obviously, three years in, I realised sometimes the challenge is maybe a little bit too big. And uh, and in all honesty, amalgamating the two shops, I got what I wanted. I kept the companies. I do what I do. Um, and I think I've made it a much better business boy. And I had these two shops. I had these two businesses, one there being an academy. One is the business, the shop itself. Um, we employ all the staff. It's wonderful. And, you know, I'm more control. And I think as an owner of a business, I think any owner anywhere in the world in this industry wants the field of in control. And it's a really difficult thing to do because – as you guys know yourself as business owners in the past and currently, um, it's like herding cats. Staff are like herding cats. It's so difficult because you're working with them. They're really responsive and really accountable. But I can understand how barbershops do struggle with staffing because, you know, it is very difficult. You're working with creative people that are quite emotional and... Um, like we all are, I mean, it's, it's a lovely job. In the last year, it's been quite hard for everyone, for obvious reasons. And I think it's time to be a good team. I think teamwork is the dream work, and that's what it's all about. 
Yeah, and I think, you know, you both said something there and you both got, Gary's got multiple uh, locations as well. But I think for me, um, as an outsider looking in, a business who does well when the owner's not there is a well-run ship. If you, if you have to be there to make your business successful, that's the, the tail wagging the dog. Structure. Uh, we had on, who did we have on the guy a couple of weeks ago, Gary, from New York? Joe. Um, Joe, you know, Joe the Barber, just great about the structure and the, the, the systems that he had in place makes that the, the, the dream systems. work. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, for, for you guys. So that's your ex... That's what I, personally, I love structure and systems. Yeah, that's our age, though, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> that's our age. We, we, we love the structure. Absolutely, absolutely, um, yeah. So that excites Well, we want to know you know. what we're doing every minute of the day, don't we? Because... Um, yeah, that excites you about your job. What's so your biggest fears? What's the... This is, we we apologise for everybody. Kevin's got a bit of lag on his... Uh, Wi-Fi, but um, we'll bear with him. Uh, Kevin, what's your biggest fears at the moment within the industry, uh, just generally? What, what, what? We've asked you what excites you, but what, what kind of bugs you or? Do, kind do you know? Of I'll be feels? honest with you. Um, I think during lockdown, I think mm -hmm. I, I like probably many barbers, and I'll be really honest here. You have night where you wake up in the middle of the night, and you have visionary dreams and they're so vivid that your shop's going to be empty and people ain't going to come back and there was that honest fear that we don't know what we're coming back to and after the third attempt the nerves kick in a little bit and with all the planning and the processes and the training and the structure and the systems you put in you're hoping they work thankfully it's been very good but you have that undoubted fear because you don't know what's coming this last year as I think unsettled people, I think it's a great opportunity. I think looking at now, opportunities are there now. And I think established businesses do have a chance to grow now. I think it's going to be, it's an opportunity. It's a time for, for opportunity and new start for everyone. Um, the biggest fear is that for me, I physically cannot cut hair no more. If my hands pack up or if my feet pack up or, you know, because I've been on the chair many years. I love being on the chair. I love cutting every day. I like with the customers. I love being with the staff. I like being part of the community we serve. And my fear will be that I am taken away from the chair, not through choice, through health. So I try to keep myself quite fit and healthy. I try to keep myself very mentally healthy. But that's the fear, I think, for most barbers, that you don't get to choose to stop cutting out. It's taken from you. And I think that's a sad sight. But hopefully, we're all going to be cutting for many years to come. We're all quite well at our age, as you say. And I think we're all quite healthy. And I think we've got a healthy mindset. I think that's the main thing, the healthy mindset you need. Very yeah, good. Definitely. I'm a big believer in that. Uh, yeah, I'm, me too. But I, I think that's quite apt as well because, you know, if you just said that to me at the end of probably last Saturday, I'd say, you know, I can't carry on like this anymore. <laughs> because I was absolutely in bits after two, those two, <laughs> those two weeks. Um, just... You're, you're starting to the industry, and, and I know we, you, you've got a, a, you had a great mentor, Mr. Roger Wigmore, didn't he? You, you, you did. did your, it was, didn't you? It was amazing. It was amazing for me. Um, I was working in London doing ladies' work, and I sent myself to college doing ladies' work. I had a trade under my belt. I was always already had a trade outside of barbering or hairdressing, and I decided to put myself through college to learn hairdressing. So. I worked in London in, um, in Blackfriars for a salon owner called uh, the Riverside Studios. And I, I volunteered my time. I sent myself to college. I passed my hairdressing exams as you did them. And a friend of mine, a really good friend of mine, knew Roger. And Roger was looking for another person to work with him. And I met Roger. He introduced me to him. And we clicked. And I ended up being with Roger for a very, very long time. And he persuaded me to come out of hairdressing and go into barbering. And Roger was a really inspiring guy, similar age to ourselves. Very, very excitable. We had so much fun together. We had, I think, was the most amazing start to an industry 
and he taught me my barbering and I had my hairdressing skills and he, he he suffered me, I think. I think if we found it really hard, but he was really good with me. And I was with Roger for a long, long while, a good eight, nine years. And um, eventually I went into barbering full time after um, part time and doing other bits. And I, I established myself at Wiggies. It was only because I relocated area where I lived. I left Wiggies to move to another part of Essex in Whaley. So... But I'm still good friends with Roger. We see each other all the time. We look at memories we had. We made so much fun. It was brilliant. Um, I think having a mentor in the industry is so important. He was he really set me on a good path, definitely. And I'm forever thankful for him. That's good. I think we've all got those iconic figures in his career that probably aren't even named. They're not on the circuit. They don't. We don't see them in exhibitions. But you all look back at one person that nobody knows, but it's just so close to you that said. That person helped me to get to where I am today without that individual being in my career, in my life, not only to help me, to guide me, but also as a friend, as a confidant, you know, and sadly over the last 12 months, we've lost some of those people as well. I have individually, you know, Bill were a massive mentor to me and, um, you know, I just look back with fun the same, you know, without him in my life, I wouldn't be where I am today. And, uh, you know, I can't pay any bigger tribute to anybody. Kevin, my next question to you is, if you could have one day to work alongside anybody, who would that be? Just one day. You just want to work with that one person for a full I would, day. I can't say you two, can I? If that'd be wrong, wouldn't it? I couldn't say Simon and Gary, obviously. Well, you can if I you want. I see you any time I want. Um, but I think... Okay. <laughs> I think... Um, I think the obvious one for everyone in the industry, if they could bring them back a day alongside Reed House, the same would be the most inspiring thing you will ever do in this industry because you changed everything for hairdressing and barbering. Um, on a personal note, I think um, I've actually done it and I think I quite enjoy it. I'd like to do it again. One of the people that I would love to work alongside would be um, a guy called Daniel Morin, who's part of the Addis team. He's over in the States. He's a real inspiring, motivational guy. And if you ever want to lose your mojo, he's the man to kick it back in place. He's, he's great. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's like Brutus. He roars. He's fantastic. And Danny is a really positive, motivating individual. Uh, Chris Vaughan, the Beverly Hills barber. I love Chris. He's, he's very similar ilk to the guys we got on this, as you say yourself. And, and Gary, he's got a very positive attitude. He's a real gentleman. And again, working, I'd love to go to LA and work in his salon for one day just to see what difference it is. Um, I just think there's some amazing people in this industry and it is evolving all the time. And I think to pick one person would be very hard. But I'll, there's lots of people that inspire me. There's so many people that I like for different reasons as well. It's not just cutting hair. It may be their outlook. It may be their enthusiasm. It might be their creativity. It, it, Everybody gives something, and I think that's what's exciting. So one person would be Reed Alice soon, obviously, because I like to know the person. Perfect. But I think there's so many inspiring people in our industry currently. Kevin, just while we're on that, you know, you've talked about uh, stateside. Uh, what have you got in the pipeline, or what, what do you see the future at the moment for live events? Is it going to be virtual? What, 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 is, what is Kevin Borley, K, the K Salons, or Andy's? What, what, what's going forward for you now, after, you know, post COVID, if you like? Obviously, we're all looking forward. Uh, what's done's done. We can't change it, and we've got to establish and be very, very positive in mindset, definitely. Um, I hopefully, shows will come back. It might be different. It might be more limited crowds, but it'd be more intimate. I think sometimes intimacy in a classroom or intimacy in a crowd produces better quality work as well. I think that's important. Um, so I think more classroom work. I'd like to do more one-to-one -one work, one to half a dozen people in the team. I want to do more. I'd love to do more consultancy work. Once we can get out and about and we can meet, I like to go to people's salons and work with them. And I like to use my salon. I've got 12 chairs. I've got the academy space. So I'd like to do more personal training and more individual um, personalised skill set work with people. 
I think stage work is definitely coming back. In what form, we're not sure. I mean, it is a very strange, um, it's an unprecedented uh, platform now. I think it'll come back, and I think we'll be so excited when it comes back. And I don't think, I think we talk a lot, I think the industry itself will shows, especially in the UK, we have quite a few shows running, and everybody misses them. We all miss the social side, we miss the connection, and I think I cannot wait to get back to that. I'm so excited to go back to that. It will happen, um, hopefully this year, if not, definitely next. Um, but I think we'll all appreciate it even more than we've ever done, I think, truthfully. But do you know what, Gaz, and I'll say it to you both, obviously you've been back in shots, but I've been down a wall the last couple of weeks doing some virtual seminars just to be back in the academy. Uh, there's an old cliche saying, I don't like to say it, but a lot of people have said it, the comeback's better than the setback. But I've got to say, working in there, every time I go into the academy now, it just feels, this is it. This could be the last time I'm working here, so I'm going to give it my best shot. Um, everything I'm going to do, I'm going to give the very, very, very best version of Simon Shaw, um, which you guys at Anderson will be shitting yourselves when I tell you that, um, because sometimes if I run at 50%, it's good enough. But uh, whatever now, you're right, Kevin, we're going, to, we're going to take every opportunity we can and to make everything absolutely uh, fantastic. Uh, guys, before we go on to Kevin's quick fire questions as well, there's something coming up there in the chat which is a link there. You can click onto that link and receive a wall free face mask. If you want to look really cool in your shop with a little black mask there, it's got a little metal strip there. Really good if you wear glasses because I had steamed up ones guys while I've been wearing these. So click onto that, you get a free wall face mask also as well. Use the Barber's Arms code on the website for 20% discount from now till midnight on Tuesday. Kevin Vorley, we've got some quick fire questions for you, mate. Are you ready? So, Kevin, what is your favourite music? House music. I love my house music. I'm a big fan of soulful house music. I've got a big record collection. I love my music. I, I live for my music. So, house music, old soul, anything like that. I love all that. I love dance music. So that's me. Excellent. I'll put some of that on, on a stage and get you on when I see you walking past me. Uh, what's your favourite hair show? What's the one that you love to go to? I'll, I'll dance my arse off. <laughs> Sorry that I missed the question. Favourite hair show? What's the favourite show you go to in a year? Uh, anyone you're at, Simon. I love to watch her. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, I think the Salon International is the best one. It's always It was my first one, and it's the one that I used to go and watch people and want to be what they're doing. So I think Salon International in London, and being a London boy, it's very special to me, Salon International. It's always will be. And if you had to do one last haircut, which would it be? What's, your, what, what's the last haircut that you'd like to do? My last sides, length on top, sharp tapered neck, scissor work, nice bit of clip over comb, classic. Classic barbering, bit of razor work, lovely. Nice one. What's your favourite city? What's the favourite destination that you love to be at? Best place I've visited, especially barbering New York. It's amazing. I found, I found New York just like the movies, just like the TV. Noisy, overwhelming, huge. I loved it. I thought New York was amazing. It was a great experience. And last question is, who is your hairdressing barbering hero? Um, it's really difficult, actually. I, you know what? I said it's been there all the time for me and has always been someone I would turn to for just, just to bounce ideas off. I think Adam Sloan. I think Adam is... Adam's done a lot, like yourself, done so much for the industry over the years. And he's, he's, been, he's been just a consonant. He's been so consistent. So I think Adam's probably, in, currently I look at it and I think, in, you know, he's achieved so much in industry and he's done it without, he's, he's done it without precedent. He's just done it. And I, I've got a lot of time for Adam. I think he's been very good to me as a friend. And um, yeah, I, I admire Adam so incredibly. I do. 
Uh, we've had Adam, uh, some of the people you spoke about tonight, Chris Vaughan, Adam Sloan, have been on this uh, show as well. It's nice to see the Essex boys sticking together as the Essex boys have over the years. And if you ever watch any documentaries on the Essex boys, it is definitely not <laughs> Kevin and Adam. There are some naughty boys in there. Uh, to recap here as well, we've got Kevin Varley, uh, the imagining, you know, great presenter, got fantastic business down there in Billericay. Uh, Kevin's listening to some house music or some old soul. He's doing this, his favourite show in Salad International. His last haircut that he will be doing at, at this venue would be a classic cut using all the clippers, scissors, razors, just something really nice and classic. Uh, if you could move Salad International, I'd love to do this in the city of New York, which is his favourite place to strut his stuff. And he's doing this all alongside his hairdressing hero, Mr. Adam Sloan. Kevin Foley, you're a guest on Barber's Arms. Congratulations. Well done, Kev. Have a great weekend and a great bank holiday. You're a super guy. Well done, Kev Foley. Thanks. Thanks for coming down, Kev. Thank you, everybody. Well, thank you so much for asking me on. We'll see you soon, mate. Thank you, Gary. Thank you very you much for having me on. You gone. He's gone. A little bit of lag there. We apologise for this. It's not on our end. It's uh, sometimes people's Wi-Fi's or data has done a uh, match up to the Zoom. And uh, so we do apologise if you are ad-libbing there or the questions were a bit lagged as we go in there. Um, great guest. Loved Ivan being on. Thought Ivan were great. And Kev's great as well. Great people. Some of the people there, Gary, who I love to see when I travel or if I'm in the UK... I, I like to see them. I like I like to see those guys there because the pros, they're going to do a good show. It makes me raise my game because he's on that stand and he's on that stand. So I know that whatever we're going to do, you know, um, we've, got to, we've got to raise our game because these guys are, are really professional. One thing I like about Kevin as well is he wears that grey suit with a, with a badge and it's called the big K badge on him. Um, it's his signature. It works for him. He, he looks good. He looks professional. And it's his signature. I, I, I really do like the guy. You, you know what? I think I think what it is as well, with us travelling so much and getting out and about, though, you know, if I, I think one thing that this has made me realise is, you know, because we spot, we, you know, we, we're all over the country, we, 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 we get around, but you don't see these people, do you? You know, if we if, if we literally don't do these shows or the virtual thing, sure. what we do, now, you literally lose touch unless you pick that dog and bone up and actually make a physical effort to speak to somebody. You don't see them. You, you don't see them. You don't speak to them. You know, and I, I think sometimes I, I realise that if I didn't do certain things, I might not see those people again. You know, it, it, it's it's quite a it's quite a funny thing, really. Um, it, it's just, you know, it's, <laughs> and our producer, I'm laughing because our producer... Just, I'm laughing the same as as well. He's uh, going through, he's doing his cotton, he's dog and bone, no, I'm mate, yeah. Oh, Kev, yeah. Fucking guy, yeah. I'm still constrained because I'm Ben. Yes, mate. Um, which would be really good if you have a few more of them cocktails. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. We'll uh, finish off. When I finish off my summary, guys, you've got the, the challenges as now as we're having lost orders, is to finish up your summary in a Cockney accent. No, 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 no. I only said that as a bit of a, bit of a laugh, you pair of tarts. I was just, I was just, I was just giving something back to our guest, you know, that was all, that was all. Uh, uh, who indoors, mate? Um, <laughs> I'm having a la nice little Malbec to finish off with, a great evening here on episode 52, 30th of April. <laughs> Guys, as I finish off this summary, it is a bit quiet. It's quietened down a little bit, but you'll get back there. You know, if you if you average it out, um, you know, I've been going on about our training this week and people are like in, in a director's meeting today, were like, well, I, I spoke about training a lot and I wouldn't normally have done that. And the reason why I've done it is because it's different. We've never done virtual seminars. I've never done seminars for 927 people in two weeks on virtual Zooms. So, yeah, I'm going to talk about it because it's an achievement. So we are breaking, you know, things are happening that's different. And I do think that, you know, the, the, the excitement of everybody going back in for an air cut is there. But if you average it out, how many you've done over the last two weeks, if you are a bit quieter now, if, you, if you've summed it out, you've probably done a month's work 
in two weeks. So don't beat yourselves up too much. Get your marketing into place. Rejig, ready for the read books that you've all done and, um, you know, some of the stuff like what we spoke about on Team Talks, retail sales and things like that. Start getting yourself prepared for the, the summer months as well, hopefully, that you have a, a bust in. Let, let, you know, if the next couple of weeks are going to be a little bit quiet, then the steady peak will come back into your barbershops and into salons as well. Uh, congratulations to Mark Woolley on his fantastic place in Rathbone Place, which is the electric space, which I was fortunate enough to get the Royal Tour on Tuesday. An amazing space, guys. Have a look at him on his website at theelectricspace.co.uk um, for if you're in London and you're cutting air, it's a great place to go do your stuff. Uh, don't forget as well to use the wall discount code from now till midnight on Tuesday. You go onto the wall website, type in Barber's Arms, you receive 20% discount on anything on our website. Uh, just for you guys at Barber's Arms, a little treat there. And also on the comments as well, if you scroll down, you'll see something there. If you type in and, and fill the form in, you'll get a free wall face mask as well. So little giveaways there for uh, Bank Holiday Weekend. That leaves me just to say before I hand it over to Gaz, have a great weekend. Be nice and safe. We're looking very strong and positive here in the UK with vaccinations and uh, no spikes so far. Keep us fingers crossed. Let's do the right thing. And uh, hopefully we can all move forward into the rest of 2021 feeling really positive. Uh, Gaz, I'll let you tell you who's coming up next week. Um, but from me, have a fantastic bank holiday weekend. Hope you're really busy tomorrow. Have a rest, most of you, Sunday, Monday. Recharge your batteries and smash it on Tuesday when you get back. God bless. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Mr. Simon Shaw. So, just a couple of things I'd like to do personally. Uh, Mr. Ashley Thomas, who's had his first baby with us in the Rogers family. Um, he had Cade last Saturday. Kind of thought you made best of luck. Hope everything's well. Um, Mark Walters on the feed. Yes, I know you're going up the apples and pears now. I've, I've said one thing. You don't have to take the piss. Thank you very much. Uh, remember, everybody, start registering for the live expo now. We're going to start pushing it next week for all brands that are, are on board. Simon's already given you the lineup that we've got. It's going to be the most exciting thing happening this side of Christmas. So to all you guys out there, have a great day tomorrow. Lovely bank holiday weekend. Cheers. We'll see you next Friday. Good health, everybody. God bless, guys. Have a great weekend. Thanks to Kevin Volley. Thanks to Ivan Zoot. Um, all good stuff. Great show. Got a great show coming up next week as well. So we can't wait to do that and have a look on our uh, website, the uh, barbersams.co.uk. You can see some of the amazing presenters that's going to be joining us on the 6th of June as well. Lots of stuff happening. Great here. Don't forget to get the discount code for the wall stuff. You've got till midnight on Tuesday and also as well, the free face mask. It's on the comments there, link in and fill the form and you get a free nice wall face mask. Have a great weekend. And next week we've got Kenny Duncan and Mohammed from A-Star. Great show, looking Can't forward to it. Can't wait to see these guys next week as well. Have a great week, guys. Enjoy. All the best. <laughs>